Some good news though, Ethan Posick has been designated to return uh, from the injured reserve, the Brown center who played so well, um, and Kevin Stefanski expects him to be available to go um, against the Saints on Saturday. Um, take a look at uh, this, and we'll have a couple of these, but let's start with this one. 20 rushing yards less per game, one less offensive touchdown per game, and Nick Chubb's yards per carry went from 5.65 to 3.7. That's what they have averaged with the running game since Posick has left. We got one more, but let's welcome in Jeff Lloyd uh, from the Lockdown Browns podcast. Uh, Jeff, even Posick, um, he, he, we kept saying he was playing well. The eye test said they missed him, and there's some stats that back him up as well. There's no question. I think, first of all, the biggest irony of this is that we are actually here at this point of the season. And we're saying, man, this team really missed Ethan Posick. Um, and the, the ironic thing also to this, though, is you look at all those numbers, you see all of that stuff. The Browns went 3-1 and one without Ethan, Pos Ethan Posick. He went down to the Buffalo game four games after the Browns were 3-1. and one. Uh, Certainly rebounded a against a very difficult and tough Baltimore defense on Saturday. Um, but when you get down and you're talking third or fourth guy at any position in the NFL, you know there's going to be issues. Teams are not that deep. It's a 53-man roster. We know the way it works. Um, posting one of the most underrated, under-talked about signings of the offseason. We were all talking about you know, how Nick Harris had been here for two years and was going to be the torch being passed from J.C. Treader to him. Uh, but to his credit, oh, Ethan Posick had been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know a lot of folks are clamoring to make sure that they can probably find a way to keep oh, Ethan Posick here long term. Um, he's a guy that's definitely needed, you know, and you probably want to get, you know, the line situated and you want it this for the you know, next three games to see, you know, where you are as far as, you know, are you comfortable with all these guys? You know, going into it maybe 2023, because the more reps Deshaun Watson can get behind an offensive line that he's going to play with in 2023, the better. Um, and, you know, for Ethan Postick, you want to talk about somebody who's dedicated? Um, possibly coming back to a game is going to be played in negative nine degree temperatures when the wind factor is factored into it. That's a tough a guy right there. And uh, getting him back will be crucial. Yeah, without question. And again, so relative to the line play here's the other thing that uh, jack duffin tweets this out and he's been a guest on the show does really good stuff pro football focus weeks one to ten with ethan posick um the guards the guys that play next to him batonio first so the highest rated pro football focus grade wyatt teller the fourth highest pro football focus grade without posick batonio the 10th highest teller the 39th now it's teller's grade it's important to to note as well um, he's dealing with a calf injury, and, and that factors in towards the back half of that. But line play is about familiarity, and clearly Betonio and Teller play pretty well with Ethan Posick uh, in between them. Um, and it's funny because these guys have reached the levels that they're talked about, and obviously the contract is they both were awarded last year um, by having a nice long relationship with J.C. Shredder. Um, but Ethan Post accepted and he was you know, exactly what they needed because you know they needed a center who could move, who could pull and get out and be a factor in the running game. Ethan Posick was excellent with that. Um, and it's probably a little bit more difficult because, you know, they went, you know, uh, from J.C. Treader to learning Nick Harris. Then it was obviously Ethan Posick. And now you're asking veterans, you know, to basically look over, make sure the calls are right, you know, make sure, you know, that he's not getting manhandled. Because if you beat in the center right, well, right off the bat, another play is going to get, you know, basically blown to bits anyway. Um, but for Batonio, for Teller, it, it should get back to the comfort level of, you know, uh, you know upper echelon play that we've begun, we've become – expected from those two gentlemen so you know big for them obviously and look there is wear and tear in the nfl everybody's banged up this time of the year play deteriorates we understand that but for that unit to get back whole for these final three games it'd be crucial you know the browns regardless of whatever happens nine and eight would be something that they would really be able to hang their hat on after this crazy year